Mugama Matea, how are you doing? Of course, uh, from wherever you are catching us from, Luzei Andrew. Anderson is my name. Tukena kuanga tukolabi nevi into once in a while. And in case, uh, you know, you're watching via YouTube, I want to say that you can subscribe. It is very, very fine. We will get those people that we find um, mobile inspirational. And in case you hear their story, maybe you never know. Maybe you never know. Now we're buying Zokuri Chirokuba ko Echintu Chowe Kore Dambola Mogo because they've inspired you. When it comes to Bobby Wine, he has inspired very many youths. But I want to never take it down, no man get to Wallet Tesovoka. Today I've brought you a gentleman that we worked with here at Record TV, I think like, I think two years ago. Yes, and he was here, and uh, you know, now call him magic. He's called Modekai Molisa Martin Jr. Right now, he's not working uh, with Record TV. He works with NBS or Next Media. Now, he, we're more about reporting. I'm with Modekai Molisa, and I'm like. What's that? How are you doing, man? Fine, thank you so much. Um, you caught me in my uh, light days, you know. So many people watch me on TV. They are used with the other guy who puts on suits yeah. uh, with very nice hair, <laughs> makeup. makeup, to mention but a few. But I'm very okay. L let's uh, let's, uh, let's uh, um, first uh, take through. Uh, people who are watching and they want to know who is Mordecai Melissa Martin Jr. What kind of a person is he? Well, first of all, Mordecai Melissa Martin Jr. is a believer in God. I was born on 2nd November 1992 in Bushenye district. Uh, my mom and dad were born in the same district. Uh, I'm a Munyankore by tribe, but I prefer to identify myself as an African and at the same time as a global citizen because I know somewhere, somehow we are all connected. You never know. Uh, I could be related to people of China or Mongolia or even in the UK. So global citizenship is the one thing that I am proud of. I am now a news anchor. I am a social worker and I am a preacher of truth. I do what I call inspirational sessions, where I speak to people, remind them of what they are, their worth, uh, try to aw reawaken the giants in them, mm -hmm. and tell them that, you know, you can make it in life. <laughs> so you worked with Record TV for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and then you left for NBS. Mm -hmm. But I, I want them to get the highlights. Mm -hmm. How was it, you know, joining Next Media, being one of, um, I think right now it's the biggest um, media company that uh, Uganda has, as per now. Mm -hmm. How was the experience? How did it feel, you know, go over joining? Well, it, it felt like a dream coming true. Yeah. When I was a kid, I... I had it in my dream that you know at one time I would work for a big media house and they would be proud of me and um, my past will not define me I'll be in the space of the best of the cream and so when that happened I remember receiving a call from a person that you know was watching me on NBS called me and he's like you know hey I'm so and so works with NBS we would want to have a conversation with you regarding you know, joining Next Media. I remember I had hosted People's Agenda on Wednesday on Record TV. Yeah. Then I, I, didn't, I, I didn't wake up very early on a Thursday. So I was still in bed. I was like, is it true? Mm. said, yes. Then I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I, let me see when I can talk to you, but I'm so glad. Mm. And you know, uh, with that urge, I was speaking to Joyce Bagala, now MP elect mm. of um, Mitiana, mm. woman member of parliament. She was the chief editor by then she's the one who called me yeah. very wonderful woman and you know i'm sitting there and i'm like okay mm. i am this mordecai and you know the chief editor of the biggest tv brand in the country is calling me yeah. who am i but i remembered and uh, you had been on tv like for how long i had been on from TV. graduation to yes when they call you yes because i participated in the media challenge initiative like you said we shall go back to that story mm. but from the media challenge initiative which is just a university competition for journalism students then i record tv gave me the first opportunity to appear on tv mm. so i had been on tv for one and a half years or two 
and one and a half years or two and now the biggest media company yes, next company. media is calling you up and i'm like oh my really mm. it was so huge and then in between there uh, the, the period you joined them, of course, that's when uh, the campaigns were going on and then, you know, for the president and then the MPs and all that. And surprisingly, uh, it, it hit social media. They were like, let's boycott NBS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that treat you because you were among the reporters? Let's boycott them. How was the experience? Because they were like, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, even Bobby Wine was like, oh, actually, where did they get these results? Because every time, because every time, at one point, you as a reporter, what was the true story? Were you guys biased? Well, first of all, I, I'm so glad that you asked me as a reporter and not as the spokesperson of the uh, PR of uh, Next Media. But well, because I've been paying attention to current affairs in different countries and an election, I knew the boycott was just for a few days. Why? Uh, because I looked at uh, USA. The media is divided between Fox News that is pro Republican and CNN that is pro-Democrats. And I remembered there was a time when, uh, when, when there was an attack from those people that believe or support the Republican Party. Not all of them, but there was that uh, people that saying CNN was biased. And they might be true, but then that didn't force CNN to close. Yeah. Or even those ones that are looking at Fox News and say you are this, you are pro-Trump, or you are Republicans. Mm. Uh, please, we don't like you. Doesn't force them to close. I mean, Tucker Carlson, the likes, there are still, you know, big names on the or, or on Fox News, just like you see uh, the likes of uh, Don Lemon to mention, but if you on CNN. So I knew, and then I know the spirit of Ugandans, uh, and, and I'm not saying this in bad spirit, but we are not good at saying things and walking the talk. Mm. Most of the time is to talk about things, and then before we know it all, we've forgotten, and then we are on to another thing. Yes. I'll give you an example. Like on music, mm. an artist comes with a very wonderful song, and you know, we love that song, but before we know it all, another person brings a chidongo, and you know, it's a bango. <laughs> Why you know, Neka? <laughs> we've forgotten a wonderful mm. uh, song. So I knew uh, that was going to. Um, uh, to, to, to go and then Next Media responded to the right Honorable so the, the Honorable uh, Robert Chagulani uh, and, and you know he got answers which he wanted and you know we are still here uh, I remember we took a picture I think it was last week mm. uh, during the weekend last week but one or last week uh, during the weekend and I got I put it on my status of WhatsApp and then some guys called me and they're like, that guy is so biased. He always posts Bobby Wine. I was like, I didn't know that. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, talk to him. And he's like, I think I've also talked to him, but that guy, he's so biased. But, uh, you know, him and Bobby, you even hosted him when you were here at Record TV. And I thought you guys were good. Why do you think some people, according to your posts on social media, think you're biased when it comes to Bobby Wine? Absolutely. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful question. Um, first of all, I should let people know that I love Bobby Wine. His story inspires me. Um, I do not have any problem with Bobby Wine. Um, just now, there's a person that talked to me and said, hey, uh, you have, you've committed a crime. I said, which crime? Uh, you tweeted something on Twitter which is not, not nice and the Speaker of Parliament is not happy with you. I was like, really? Mm. Then I went back on my Twitter and then I said, the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Halitwala Kadaga, right on my boy, very wonderful woman that I do respect, said, the Speaker deserves 10 years, deserves 10 years. Mm. And here, 10 years, she wants another term. Then I said, the President said, beyond 75, someone biologically is not in, both, in good shape to lead a country. And I said, both of these people lie because they are going to make the other person is going to make is make actually she has made 10 years in parliament mm. she's not leaving the president is making 75 he's not leaving so i said they all lied so to a person that looks at this from a political angle mm. thinks i'm against the speaker of parliament or the president mm. but no i'm holding them accountable 
on what they said. So, one of the things that uh, people may think that I am biased is because I observe and I pay attention to details. The last one was the last one was when Bobby Wine came out and said, "I've spoken to the president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido." Mm. Juan Guaido is not president of Venezuela. The president of Venezuela is Nicolas Maduro. Mm. And I got people abusing me, saying me, you know, you don't like. But I said, no, mm. he's not. Uh, much as the USA wants Juan Guaido to be president, but there's disputes on that position. Mm. The, of the elected president, you may not accept. He might have rigged. But is the president, Nicolas mm. Maduro. So these people thought that I was attacking him. Before they knew it all, Bobby Wine pulled down the post on Facebook and deleted the tweet. Mm. And, you know, I was exonerated. And other days is when I ask a question. Suppose I say, okay, Bobby Wine talks about peaceful protest, which is okay, constitutional. But are we going to see him on the streets and other members of parliament? Those are the questions that I ask. And these people don't want to accept that suppose if Bobby Wine becomes president, he's going to be president of all Ugandans, not his supporters. So he's going to lead just like those that didn't vote for him and those that voted for him. And if they don't want us, us to hold him account accountable, we are creating some sort of a cult that you know we look at and we are afraid. We are creating a Hitler a Mobutu Seseseko Kukumbendu was a banger to mention by a few. These questions that they don't want to be asked are the questions that we should ask before Bobby Wine becomes president because he will know that there are so many people that are, are, are out there questioning me everything I do because he's going to be president of 45 million Ugandans if that happens. And I'm, going, I'm not going do to Do you stop. think at any one moment he could become president? I mean... Would you, would you let him be your president, to be well, specific? Th that one is left for, because the other one is called uh, secret. You know, it is, it is so, it, they make it so secret that, you know, you don't let people know. But if you go and see, I am Mordecai Murisa, one person and the other 45 million Ugandans. Even if I say I don't want him to be president and, you know, majority of the 45 million Would Ugandans you let him decide. be your president? I just want a yes Well, I cannot answer. decide. I can't. For that one, I can't. It is... But okay, mm -hmm. now, do you think he can become president? Oh, yeah, he can become president. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. We've seen people uh, even from, from even worse backgrounds become president. He can. For that one, I can do assure you. Do you think, you. Um, uh, as a journalist mm -hmm. and as a reporter, and you've done this, and you're working with uh, a good uh, media company, do you think it makes sense or do you think it is, um, you know, for you to come out and your opinionetic, you know, you decide, no gamo mani, chino china kwila wichi chino chino, yet you're supposed to just report. You just have to report. You just have to report without putting your opinion. No, no, no. Now then. As a journalist, because oh. Ogenda Kola story na inga, you know, you support this, you, you're putting, you're involving your opinion and you're a journalist, you're supposed to just report. Yep. These, there are two things. Mm. Most of the things that I do really bring out my opinion, this is my personal account. You know, I was talking to uh, a certain guy, Ray Superstar, mm. who said, man, when you're reporting on TV, I do really like what you do. But when you come on your Facebook, I don't like it. So there's a line, mm. you know, if you said, I put my opinions into the reports that I do, live on TV, there could be a question. But even on the same because at the end of the day you remain the same person you cannot still, be so biased on social media and when you come to report you're the same person but of course and you portray basically mm. what you want and what you like so absolutely before i become a journalist i'm a ugandan mm. that everyone should know i am more ugandan than a journalist mm. and there's no way it is written that when bad situations strike a country, journalists are okay. Mm. I mean, the price that you buy stuff from stores, it is the same price that I'm charged. So I have to be part of those, part and parcel. And journalism changed. Just go watch TV. Mm. If you've been watching 
the, the, you know, the, the media round table on NBS. I mean, we put out our opinions. Mm. These are opinions that we think mm. these don't necessarily mean it should be that way. But, you know, what do you think about this? Mm. That's the question. And I'm not trying to say if, if I was personal. That's why I came out a few days, weeks ago, months, and then I was talking about Alexis Ismail when he was attacking Bobby Wine, attacking his family and children. Mm. I don't go to that extent. But I'm talking about things that include me. Mm. You know, if you say that when I become president, I'm going to make sure that there's no friendship between Uganda and, and Tanzania. I'm not going to say Bobby Wine says when he becomes president, he's, not, he's mm. going to be enemies with Tanzania. No. I'm going to say, but according to the history, I think Bobby Wine's decision is wrong, mm. and I give reasons. I'm not taking sides, but I'm trying to say, Hey, I'm a Ugandan and your decision is going to affect me. Mm. It's not a mere, hey, people have died. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, the, the, the first journalist in Uganda, Omunyankole, Omunyankole, and then Ngasoma uh, Maurire Go Uganda. Now, Omunyankole, now anchoring and also reporting in Uganda. Bitandikira, where does that start from? Well, now. Let me take you back to my primary and high school days. When I was a, a, a kid, and that's high primary, um, I, I was born in an extremely humble uh, family, and we were sent in extremely broken, poor schools. And at times, there's a school I went to, which is called Mutunwe Primary School. I went to that school too. Sure. My P3, P2. See you, my OB. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I went to that school, and that's where I completed my, my primary. But they had a system. Every time they were sending school defaulters back home, the school didn't do that. They would say, ABC, you, are, you should be back home, but we're not sending you back home. You are going to sit in the teacher's resource center, TROC, spend their day while other people are learning, and then go back and tell it to your parents so that parents would know that, oh, my child spends time at school and without studying. So at one time that happened, and you know, I was sitting there with students or pupils, and this teacher, the head teacher, Mr. Elima Jackson, comes and asks, but you guys, why do you think your parents don't pay school fees? And you know, all of us were putting up our hands and you know, giving answers. So I put up my hands and explained. Before I completed, I heard him say, and before I knew it all, I was told to write an application vying for the position of a head boy and won an election, became a head boy, started speaking on assembly. Um, by the time, it was around 2008, it was the time that Obama was vying for president of the USA. And it was a time when radio was just wonderful. Listen to the black man that, is, that was going to make history in the world. I started admiring these people that were speaking on radio, what they said, and how they brought it up. Kadugala. You know, that word sounded so funny to me. Kadugala, so so kubedanga isimbao, agendo so kubeda president of America. And you know, I love those words. Then I started reading Luganda books. And that is in which class? In primary, after my primary seven. Mm. Then, 2009, Obama was president, president USA in his first time. Then I got the inspiration from some of the, uh, of the journalists that were on radio, Muchibi Serunjoji, on CBS FM, was a wonderful one. Then I started listening uh, and loving. And, and you know, I listened to Muchibi Serunjoji from P4, P5, P7. And I started reading Luganda, I became fluent. When I went to high school, I vied for the position of timekeeper. But then I joined the Writers Club. Writers Club, I found they were writing. Then there's another guy, a friend of mine, Lukenge Ronald, who decided that we start anchoring news on the assembly. And we were just funny on assembly, you know, coming up with funny headlines. And before I knew it all, it was a thing that every student at school was waiting for. Every Monday evenings. By that time, time, did you think, uh, did you, did you think that at one point maybe you join, maybe news anchoring or reporting, being a journalist? 
I, I just Did had you know basically what we're doing or it was I just was happening? just doing it for fun you yes. know but be, I, I I didn't know it was getting me ready for this for what I'm doing today mm. so we started doing it and in my senior too I vied for the position of uh, information minister at our school we were called ministers and guild president we didn't have prefects so I became information minister in senior two and I was uh, voted to be chairperson writers club now I became very influential as short as I was I was standing on the assembly reading news and teachers started getting interest uh, I, I became information minister in senior two senior three and senior four I was doing the same senior five I was elected uh, the, the, the guild president of London High School, Kapawa. Remember, I was the head boy in my primary, then becoming guild president in my high school. And, you know, it was so nice. But in, in, in all that, it was a struggle. Uh, I was missing out on schools, like, for a week or two, like a fortnight or a month, looking for school fees with my parents that were extremely poor. I realized that I had to push my school because I enjoyed school. So I would go fetch water, hawk, Polythene bags. Starting from which class when you started? You I know? started fetching water as early as primary seven. Mm. Then senior one, I was just good at that. Then I started selling polythene bags in Parkyard that, that is normal. So you used to pay your school fees? Yes, I did. And then I would get money with starting my Starting from which class? Primary seven. You paid your school fees? Oh, like yeah. the whole of it or partials? I would get what I have and then give it to my parents. Mm. They make uh, supplements and I pay. And if they didn't, because I was saving with my parents, they would just give me my savings, then pay for school fees. And I enjoyed because, you know, I, liked, I loved school. So things were becoming so difficult in high school, but I had that belief that, you know, if I was able to complete primary, I was, I was going to be able to complete senior four and probably mm. senior six. I would go fetch water, pay, uh, get money, save it with my mom. Or even at times we don't have, we don't have food at home, should use that money uh, to buy food. And this is not done by only myself. Mm. I have other four brothers of mine. So each of us, each one of us had to look for money. Either go look for scrap and sell it, mm. go fetch water, go hawk. You started that from P7, P7 up to which class? Up to senior six. Senior six, uh, which subjects did you take up? I went for, uh, uh, for history, economics, Luganda, mm. and subsidiary mathematics. So now you're done with the secondary. What happens next? Yeah, secondary then. I, I'm like, will I be able to join university? But I had a belief in me that probably something would, I would. I started working around Mukwana KD, selling polythene bags as I was. That is after senior six yes, now. Mm. Saving money with my mom. And there's a friend of mine that came and told me that, you know, there was an opportunity of joining university on a half bursary or scholarship. Mm. But then I had to apply from a, an upcountry district to show that, you know, you, are, you don't live in Kampala because mm. they thought that probably every person that lives in Kampala can, be, can afford. afford pushing themselves to school. So I went and applied through Buhikwe and I was granted a position at Kampala International University. I started studying, but things were so difficult. So I would walk from Mutundwe sometimes to Kampala International University. But before all that happened, when I was on street selling polythene bags, I was still listening, on, listening to radio. Mm. And I loved a certain gentleman called Tamale Aiden Mukasa, who was a news anchor on Sui FM 104.9. So at one time I was listening to news, and news ended. Then, you know, it was sports time by Brian Masembe, who works with Book at the FM today. When he went into adverts, then I had an advert that said, Subi FM on-air competition. Whoever wants to be part of this competition, please come and register. I said, my opportunity might be here. So I went, and then I said, hey, my name is Mordecai Mudisa, and I'm here. Uh, to register for the competition. They said, really? Have you had that advert on our radio? I said, yes. Mm. Is it still there? Then I said, yes. The, then they called, hey, I can go on air talent. So this lady told me, we are sorry. 
it should be off. We are done with gessering. Mm. Then I pleaded with the lady, Farida Nachimera, like, please, please allow me. We just let me be the, the last person. Then she's like, okay, pay the 50,000 registration fee. Mm. I didn't have the money. Then called my friend, my closest friend, uh, Julius Wanji, and I'm like, hey, my brother, would you have 50,000? Please help me. Then we paid and went into a competition of around 40 people. We were actually 40. Started competing on air. The number went from 40 to 20 to 10 to 5. I was in the 20, in the 10, and in the 5 mm. group. And then we made two on air. That I is before you even joined the university. Yes. Mm. And then I told my mom, please, you should listen in. My brothers, you should listen mm. in. And I told all my friends, because I have a couple of my friends who were not able to make it to senior six. I have a lot of my friends who were not able to make it to senior four. But then I, step, I, I still kept contact. Then I told them, man, I'm going to represent you. And they were like, man, what chick is that? And you know, I remember that, uh, that time. Time came of competition. You know, you have to anchor news. And then listeners should call in and choose who is the best. Then they would be retained. I went with a, a certain lady. Oh, my Lord. Oh, CBO Tian no Mulunja to Liza, or Lukumunya Catonism with a Subi FM, Cadde Camorida Gessigica, Gomuso Cadde Camorida Gocha, Gomuso Minze Mordecai, Maurice, Martin Jr. And you know, I had a very wonderful voice. That's what I was told. They said, My voice is for radio. I said, Okay, anchor the first story. Wabad de Oxaga Navy to Geneva on Pitom, we turned with Yakabao, and you know, I was good. I'm not blowing my own trumpet. But I was good, and before I knew it all, people called. And the other girl was good too, oh my lord. Mm. I was afraid she was going to win. And by the time we finished, I, five were on my side and three on her side. Mm. So I was retained. <laughs> Started working on Suvi FM. That is before you even joined university. Yes, before mm. I joined university. Uh, you know, and, and I, it was so why, nice why, why, Were you being paid salary or? I wasn't paid for a, a, a couple of months. You were not paid for some months. I wasn't paid. I was mm. this student that was very skinny and uh, I was looked at and, you know, someone that has been helped. And, and you know, things were becoming difficult. I was living in uh, Rubaga Division mm. where I was raised. I was walking from there to Suwi, getting to the station all dirty. It was so difficult. I told my friend and my brothers, I'm not going to make it uh, to this journey every day. Then I started sleeping in the production room at Suvi. So I would pack my toothbrush, my sponge, a few clothes, not ironed, then I would sleep there. I wake up as early as five, brush and, you know, pretend like I, I, I just were, I arrived. And, you know, I was there and anchored news and, you know, I attracted some quite an audience and, and uh, before I knew it all, it was 2014. Mm. And that was time for re-election in the USA. Mm. And Obama had served from 2008, 2012, 2012, 2000, uh, was it 2016 actually? And now it was, it was Hillary Rodham Clinton against Donald John Trump. So I asked to be given a radio show, mm. talk about what is happening in the USA. But then everyone looked at me and was like, what can you do? You can't. Mm. But then, I hope Edbo Gerema Sembe, then the managing director, said, okay, go and do it. I sat on radio and explained to listeners what the electoral college, how electoral college works in the USA. Mm. How can someone be better, perform better in popular votes counted, mm. but fail to become president. And the managing director was on radio listening. I said, oh my Lord. I said, now you own that show. Mm. You will be owning that show. That's how I now started getting paid 200,000 shillings. God makes his way. As I was failing, with people telling man, Chigan, Chiveko, a friend of mine talks about me with another, about my soul. Mm. This person gets to know me, you know, becomes my friend. 
a lady in the USA mm. said, okay. Started sharing contacts and, you know, started talking on the phone. She got interested. I got interested in our conversations that would last for an hour. Mm. And, you know, I wasn't uh, asking for anything. But Sui FM had just been sold off. So she asked me, but then what do you do? And I said, I work on radio. But unfortunately, I'm looking for a job with the radio station was sold off. Out of the blue, she says, I'm going to be paying you every month until you find another job. I said, this, there's some sort of fraud or... Okay. They said, send me your bank account. And you don't have one. Yes. And rushed to DTB and opened one. Send the details. I was in that... I didn't think that was, you know, that was going to happen. Mm. Before I knew it all, it, a few days I received emails saying, I sent this amount. I said, you're kidding me. Rush to DTB, you know, tell them I received money from this person. And they said, oh, you yeah, sent a JSDD. How much was it? It was around 700,000 shillings, and that was much for me. Yes. I said, oh, my Lord. I said, Ehe. How does a person who doesn't know you, mm. they've never seen you, give you this much? They said, okay, I received that money. Paid my school fees. And she didn't know I was paying for, for my fees. Took photos of the receipts and sent them. I said, said, no, you didn't have to do this. I was just giving you. Mm. They said, so when are you going to study again? You know, She said, I want to pay you through your fees, mm. your tuition. She did until I graduated. But before graduation, I went through a competition, inter-university media challenge, organized by the uh, Media Challenge Initiative. And, like you talked about, Emunyankole, who anchors in Uganda, there was some kind of disagreement at the university. Those ones that were behind the team of KIU in the competition, they said, because I told them I wanted to be part of them. So they said, do you want to anchor Luganda or English? Mm. I said, any. If you want me to go for Luganda, please I'm here. If you want me to go for... And you know, there was a huge dispute, you know, disagreement, an exchange in the, in the hall. No, I call it Luganda, I call it Luzungu. Mm. So they told me, a man, first go out. So I went out and you know, they had to decide. Mm. When I went back, someone said, we've decided you do. English, and other words, no, 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 Luganda. <laughs> said, but I thought you sent me out to choose. Mm. But then they said, okay. Then I said, let me, let me not give you headache. Let me do Luganda. Mm. I went to the competition. Which year was that? Should be 2017, mm. 18, around there. Mm. Went to, into a competition. I became the best Luganda news anchor. <laughs> and mm. I remember, but then things were not okay still. Mm. Because I remember I walked, they, they said the ceremony, the awarding ceremony was going to be at Serena Hotel. Mm. And I had to have a suit. I didn't have one. Red carpet. So I was from my hustles and I went to Serena Hotel. I didn't know I was the one winning. Mm. And I sit at the back because I was the old man out. Everyone was looking sharp. Mm. I was putting on a jean and a, a, jean and a funny shoe with a, a, a shirt. So they read the name. And the winner, they started with the nominees. Mm. You know, the red nominees from Makerere University. And the winner of the best Luganda News Anchor 2018 is Mordecai Morris. Oh mm. my lord. I said, are you kidding me? You know, I went uh, to pick my award. I said a few words I still remember. I said to speak gratitude is courteous and noble. To enact gratitude is pleasant. But to live gratitude is touching heaven. I was getting it from the gratitude that I was getting from every person and trying to inspire these people to live gratitude. I was so overwhelmed. You know, when they read my name, every word was, I mean, I said, oh my, 
I remembered myself walking on streets, going to school. I remembered the days that I spent without eating or drinking. I remembered when I was sleeping out of, outside of the school. I remembered my high school days when things were so difficult that I didn't have shoes to wear. But I was so grateful for every person that had contributed to that journey. And before I knew it all, Record TV was there to give me a job. Started anchoring. Having was, one, uh, the, was cash involved for the winners or they're just there like wasn't, won? There was nothing. Mm. But there's a certain sense of optimism mm. that I work with. We went to a record, F, a record TV. And we were a, many of us. And we had a conversation with the chief editor by then, Chris Higeni. Mm. When I left with the CEO of Media Challenge Initiative, I told them, I'm going to work here. He laughed. And you know, they called me to start a training before I get on air. But there's a way God has been doing things. On that day, the anchor, Matovu Po, had issues. He, they were not actually issues. He was at the university. And the, the, an examination that was going to be done during day was pushed to evening, which is the time of the news. So he thought he would do the examination, come back to the station, anchor news. So he called and said, hey, I'm not going to make it have an examination. I was there. Funny. Chris again says, let's go for screen test. I tried, said, you can. Then they showed a certain guy, please, can you assist him with a court? Remember that it was a funny court that was shining, it was shining. And, and you know, I went on TV, anchor news. When I left the studio like this, my fellow colleagues, now, one of them, Fiona Nabukera, hugged me and said, you are good. I said, oh, thank you. That marked the journey. Mm. But because I knew it is not only Luganda that would, w w that would push me to where I wanted mm. to be, I had to play with the two languages, English and Luganda. There was a show that was defunct on record TV. I said, let me take it on People's Agenda. Mm. Started hosting the show. And before I knew it all, I started hosting the Sunrise, uh, what is the morning show? those morning show that I was hosting. Before I knew it all, I had to anchor Luganda News because I had won the award. Mm. So I had, I was a gentleman, I was a man that was putting on so many hearts. Mm. And those hearts, I was grateful for them. And that's how I started. I made sure mm. that I was good at what I was doing, not with not enough money, I made sure that I buy a nice suit according to my eyes mm. so that I could have people watch me. Do you think it's fair for most of uh, the people, I wouldn't say journalists, but most of the people work maybe on radios, TVs, those guys who do the reporting and they don't get paid. Do you think it's fair or they pay them per story? Per story could go in for like, let me say 20K, 30K. Do you think it's fair? Well. It is not fair, mm. and I'm going to tell you why. Because you do not know what battles these people are fighting. Mm. The battles that I was fighting when I was in school were part of them were taking care of my parents. And not only that, other battles were pushing myself. You know, if you don't pay this person, mm. how do you expect them to deliver? In the end, they'll go out to the streets and they will not report what you want them to report or what is. They will just report because, you know, an officer or even someone has given out some money to them. So what will happen? They will start being biased. They, their mind will be corrupted or compromised in a blink. So it is not fair at all. It is very important to be considerate to know what are these people going through. The bad problem that we have, a huge problem, is the selfishness 
of so many employers. They want to drive expensive cars, live in wonderful mansions, eat expensive food, but starve their employees, but expect them to deliver to their excellence. Why was it so easy for you to leave Record TV to join NBS or Next Media? Why was it so easy that you didn't even think about it? You're like, ah, good to No, go. no, no, no. <laughs> you're, 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 you're lying <laughs> when you say I didn't think about it. I, uh, I remember NBS came for me in October 2019. Uh, and I was proud of Record TV because it gave me the platform. And I had demands. A, B, C. Demands that I wanted. There were willingness to deliver on these demands, but there wasn't an assurance on when. But there was willingness. But at the same time, I have a personal program that I do, which is inspirational sessions. I speak to students, university students, um, uh, general public and school, high school, more special senior, four senior, five and senior, six, speaking to students and tell them who they are, you know, telling them the possibility of seeing their dream come true, and, and, and everything to do with personal realization and keep, keeping a focus on your dream. So this one expanded. And you know, the other person that I told you in the USA called me and said, hey, how about you come and do it here? But, you know, I got bookings from a couple of schools in the USA. So they called me and I had to go. And I had to be there for around four months. When I left, before I left, I told my bosses on ABC. When I went, uh, I remained in contact with them. But the willingness or oh, the assurance on when these were going to be delivered was still a huge question mark. Mm. But at the same time before I left, NBS had called me. So I was still there because I went to NBS and told them there would, there would be no problem, but I'm traveling. They said, we are willing to wait for you. So I was in the USA for around more than three months and took a decision. I'm joining NBS when I come back to Uganda because there was no, and besides that, it was a huge name mm. calling me a mentor, Joyce Vangala. So, like you said, and you've been telling me that when I came on Record TV, I did magic. Mm. How about I go try out the magic somewhere else? Go because out. because if you look at, uh, if you look at NBS, those guys are too many. I would mm. say it is overcrowded. They basically want every good thing to be theirs. Mm. You know, when it comes to entertainment, they're almost having everyone. It comes to news reporting, they're, they're almost having, they have everyone there. So uh, when it's a place where everyone is good, you don't have your time to shine. Because we are having the Mildred to Heises, we are having the Sabites, we are having the, you know, lots of them. So at the end of the day, you end up you end up covered there because there are so very many of them. Well, um, one thing that you should understand... Because at record, you are okay, you know? You could shine there, but now the other side, I'm thinking there are too many people. Too well, many. Well, one thing that you should realize is we all look at success and shining in different ways. Mm. However, when I went on NBS, I was received with open wonderful hands one of the people that welcomed me and loved me so much is Samson Kasumba mm. and he told me one thing there's enough enough space at the top so that's what he told me he said look at uh, 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 at CNN there's Wolf Blitzer there is Cuomo uh, there, there is Don Lemon there is Anderson Cooper there is, uh, 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 there is um, uh, Christian Amanpour. There is everyone. Mm. It is a matter of TV. Or it is a matter of how do you give space to these people? I'll give you an example. 
when I went to NBS, like I anchor Sunrise, mm. your story, and sometimes live at nine, sorry, uh, live at one. This didn't close anyone's door. Mm. It was a matter of arranging. So you're arranging. basically doing English or Luganda? Luganda. Mm. Arranging, you know. But in case you're given a chance to choose between English and Luganda when you're doing what you're doing, what would you go for? I love Luganda, but because I'm looking at a broader market. Mm. That's why the interview now, you cannot, you are not interviewing me in complete Luganda. Mm. Uh, so I would go for English. But look, I have no problem with why because you Because at the end me. of the day, the way you brand yourself mm -hmm. is basically what is going to work. Yes, and when you but want now, to change it, yeah. it is super hard. But now... Everyone knows me as an, uh, an English anchor. Uh, anchor who anchors English. Mm. Uh, so, there's nothing like when you go, if you do magic, mm. the question is, do not be a king in only a few people that matter. Mm. Can, you put, can we put you in th that class mm. of the cream and shine? That's when we can know that you can. Mm. Because see, these are not special beings, those ones that are shining mm. among the best. No. I produce the frontline show, the big talk, anchor report. Mm. If I wasn't good, probably I would be kicked out. The frontline show, it is the leading current affairs show, night show on mm. TV in Uganda. Mm. Then big talk, the frontline show hosted by Sabit, mm. Big Talk hosted by Kanari Mugume. I mean, what else do I want? You know what comes with production. Has, it, has to, media paid you off when it comes to finance? I think, <laughs> I think yes or no. Depends on what you look at, you consider as money. There are so many people that are watching that you're going to tell that, you know, Suppose you say, I'm paid four millions, and someone is a commissioner in URA is like, no, that's my pocket change, mm. you know? But then you're going to talk to a certain class of people. So you don't regret joining journalism? I do not regret at all, because I wanted to be in places where history is made. Mm. I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to see myself grow. I wanted to see these things happen. Would you say you've achieved basically what you wanted in life? Every dream that mm. I had when I was a kid. One was working on radio, anchoring news and hosting a political show. I did on Subi FM, anchoring news, Agocha, and hosting Alipota Namtaika. Mm. I wanted to host a TV show. I did on record TV with People's Agenda, mm. anchored news, Agawa Nunawali. Mm. I went on NBS. I am a host of the breakfast show meeting. Mm. I anchor news and produce dreams achieved. Do you think uh, journalism is a private entity or our government is in between there? Uh, it depends in which country. In Uganda here, do you think mm. journalists are left, media is left to do what it has to do or the government is involved in one way or the other. This is a, a one, first of all. I'll tell you this is a very young democracy. There's a lot of things that we are still working towards. Mm. Uh, there is still involvement of government. That's why recently you saw brutalization of journalists. In, you know, they were just covering Bobby Wine. Mm. They didn't commit any crime. But because someone doesn't want something to be seen, our friend, he almost lost life, Ashwaf Kassidye of mm. Ghetto TV, you know, and others, Daniel Utaya, my friend, mm. uh, Chitimbo, Sabit, the other time was limping. There's not much freedom. Government is still keeping its iron hands on journalism. Do you think it's fair? It is not fair. I mean, what is fair about, uh, uh, about beating me? It is wrong and shouldn't be done in any way that is inhuman, should be condemned, it is wrong. And the president and everyone in responsible positions should stand and dream about that Uganda that we all want. There's no threat about the job I do. If, uh, if uh, 
if I asked if you could um, summarize basically how the voting, mostly when it comes to the presidential voting, mm. to summarize what happened mm. and in your own opinion, mm. do you think um, it was a fair and good election? Well, first of all, I'll tell you your own opinion. Yes, that I am not an observer. I wasn't sent to be an observer, but as a reporter, I think there were cases of irregularities. The likes of beating up people, of course, which is wrong. And you remember, from the day of nomination, Patrick Oboya Muriat of the FDC was nominated without shoes. He ate and drank tear gas almost everywhere. That is not nice. Bobby Wine was forced to go through dark roads deep in the villages. At times failed you know, to speak. Stopped, he slept on the roadside. All those things are not nice. Political opponents shouldn't go through that kind of hell. It is wrong. And I do not condone. I do not say, hey, that's nice. It is wrong. But what I am not okay with it is the channel under, with, under which we want to use to get power. You get? I think if I have a conversation with my grandmother, she says, at least we have seen a enough dead bodies. We don't want another president to step on the bodies of people. Who is killing to, these people? I mean, the reports are still with the police. No one knows about that. So you know about the drones? Have I you mean, seen one? This is our, oh, I, I mean, we have, we have <laughs> one at NDS that, that takes us to the field. Yes. <laughs> so now, they, 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 you know, uh, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, uh, was declared the winner. Mm. Do you buy that? Because if I say yes or no, mm. out there, everyone that is watching is going to be like, now, see, you don't, you don't, you don't support uh, President Musa. Oh no, see, you don't, su you you don't support Bobby Wine. Rigging hmm? was involved. Rigging was involved. I, I mean, one thing that I can tell you mm. that cannot be a direct answer. But we had cases of irregularities, like we've had. You think <laughs> Museveni <laughs> was an awful winner? I say, and I repeat. Your answer is going to create some funny thoughts in so many minds of people. No, it's and just, I'm your comfortable, it's just your opinion. I'm comfortable not saying yes or no. Why? You fear? <laughs> I do not fear, but I'm telling you, and you started it off with saying, see, when you say you put out your opinion, one thing I know for sure, President Museveni is the president of Uganda. How he won the election is left to the public, just like Bobby Wayne said, is going to the court of public opinion. Do you think it makes sense? What? Public, uh, public court. But you say court Yavan, public mm. court. You, Does it make sense? It makes sense when you define it. What is a public court? That's why I'm asking you. I do entertainment. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know what a public court, court is. Mm. Mm. So do you feel secure in Uganda when you come up and you say anything you want? You know, as we have freedom of speech, do you feel safe in Uganda? The freedom of speech is still limited. It is still limited. Uh, and limited on either sides. When you say l what you said, what you want, the way it is perceived. Mm. Let me give you an example. When you say something about the president, which the support of the president might not like, they will say, man. You so what happens if you say seven didn't win? What happens? I just want to know what happens. No, no, no. It is just your opinion, but what Museveni happens? I just want to know, because I don't know these things. I just want to know what happens. See, see where you want to take me. <laughs> no, I just want to know what happens, like seriously. Well, that's when I said seven did win. Mm. What oh. happens? Uh, then, the, I mean, why would I say that? But what's the truth? What do you think? The truth is from the Electoral Commission of Uganda. Mm. Yes. Do you think he has been there for long? Yes, he has been there for long. And you think I mean... This one is known to everyone. Go mm. Google. Longest serving leaders in Africa is one of them. Mm. Mm. So do you, th do you feel like you'd want change as Mordecai Mulisa Martin Jr.? Change? This is it. I think leaders should not stay for long. 
do you want change? We change because I told you we, pers we perceive change in different ways. I'll give you an example. Bob Wine says protest. Ugandans go to protest. And there are so many members of parliament who believe Bobby Wine won an election. Mm. Are we going to see these members of parliament leading by the front line or they're going to use their phones and say, please, let's go? So, some might have reached where they wanted to reach. Mm. They're not bothered about a thing. So, it is the most important thing what I want to see in this country. It is peace and tranquility. I it saw you report about the planes uh, which had come in the country mm. at the Entebbe airport. Mm. Uh, what do you think uh, would be your best story you've ever done, ever since you started doing media? Well, the best story that you cannot forget and you're like, man, there I nailed it. Um, biggest story. Uh, because that was the second bunch of airplanes that came in, mm. I think it is one of the things that I really sit down and be proud of because, you know, entering that aeroplane with the, 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 the Prime Minister, I know 50 years or 100 years from now, Uganda will have more than enough mm. Airbus or kind of aircrafts. But when they refer to the first ones that we had and people that were there, reporters, my name will be one of them. Mm. It makes me proud. That's one of the stories. The other biggest story you think you've done and you are proud of it. Um, I reported about the spirit that is dying within people of Greater Masaka. Mm. That place was known as source of Matoke. Now it is Busheni and other, country, and other districts. Mm. I talked to these people telling me about what had caused this and you know how they think to revive the old legacy. Mm. I think that, that was, was good. Ah, so in case you get birthed kids, would you let them join journalism? Um, because I wasn't pushed by anyone to join journalism, mm. I would want them to join where they want to be. Mm. I don't want them to join journalism because of Mordecai. I want them to feel it at heart. And then you join NBS, you get some money, you buy a car of which you still drive or ride your scooter. Why don't you drive your car? I do drive it. <laughs> but most of the time you're using your scooter. No, now, the reason is why... I do because so. you bought it and you took some time without driving it. Why? I took some time. <laughs> you're kidding me. When? What is the story? One, I buy this car and... I was living a bit fine. That's the reason that's why I bought it. But the way I look at a vehicle is not the way many Ugandans look at it. Mm. It is a thing to, you know, to look at and be excited. Is it a luxury? Yes, it is. Uh, because, and the reason that's why so many people, when I bought a car, they were like, Unguzaka Pichiko. I said, no. You know, when I'm at home, and you know, I want to go somewhere close. I don't want to go into that traffic jam. Mm. What I would do is put on my jacket right there, just like Samson Kasumba. Mm. Samson Kasumba has a car, but he has a bike. A big one. Yeah, he has a bike. He went to Akasi and they told him to take it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so mm. it is very important. And, and, and you know, I would advise people if you don't, you're not afraid of. of, of, of Motorcycles, if which, you have a car, you buy it. Which anchors and reporters who are still living, you're very proud of, and you look at them and you're like, they're doing a great job, and they inspire you in one way or the other. Uh, Samson Kasumba is a nice one. The art that brings in the anchoring, mm. you know, the skill, the coolness, and everything. Mm. He is a nice one. Um, uh, Frank Walusimbi of NTV. Mm. He's a nice one. His simplicity, mm. you know, his conversational style is a nice one. Then in the females? Female Rukshana Namuyimba mm. is a wonderful woman. I think if she's not the best, 
she's the second female anchor in the country. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, now, as we are going to be winding up, mm. uh, of course, uh, social media is Mordecai Murisa Martin Jr. Yes, Mordecai Murisa, Twitter. Yes. Just yes. enough then. On Facebook, Mordecai Murisa Martin Jr. Uh, where do you see yourself? Or what would you, uh, you know, when it comes to reporting, someone will be like, I'm just a reporter, but I feel like uh, uh, my climax if I'm anchoring the news. So what would be your climax? What is it that you want to do here in Uganda? Like, if I do that, then I'm good to go. Even if I retire, I'll be a happy person. First thing that I, I, I told you is I've been able to achieve what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. But there's so, always that climax. There's nothing you like that, a, you're done. No, there's nothing like a climax in my soul, mm. in my life. Uh, when it comes to this, all I wanted when I was a kid, I have mm. wished. Now things I want to do in my life is serving humanity, mm. social work. But why don't you get married, man? <laughs> Of course, there's a thousand reasons that I pass on. Why? Personal. Personal. Mm. Are you married? No, the boss was in the interview. Oh, because you're whining out. What is it that you love to tell you, Ghana? Well, um, let me look in this camera and speak to everyone that is out there. The reason that's why I'm proud to share my story is to inspire, is to motivate and tell you that everything is possible. I slept out. I spent days without eating. I walked to and fro school and university. All those things I went to were very hard, very difficult. But the optimism that was within me helped me and I pray and I want to inspire you in whatever you're going through to stick to that dream and that faith. Not that blind faith. The faith that tells you that you're going to make it. Wake up every day and say it is a new day. I forget what was yesterday and I'm new for what is now and tomorrow. You can make it, there's no doubt. May you remember my story and be inspired when that time comes, I went through hell. I always tell people that I've seen more funerals than weddings. I've walked through thorns than roses, but I'm here living. There's no excuse whatsoever. The world is looking for a man who has done something, not a man who can explain why he has done nothing. Words in one of Bobby Wayne's songs. So let's put away the excuses and be able to move and be proud of who we are because there is magic within us and we are all able to shine. And that's what I'm telling every Ugandan that is watching or if every person that is watching. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, Mwami Chizito is the one on camera. I've been with Mordecai Melissa Martin Jr. Luzei Andrew Anderson is my name. You can hit that subscription button. You can share it with friends, yeah? And they'll be bringing people, of course, who can inspire us in one way or another. But in case you watch the entire video, 